I'm Bob Grove from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I play full time on the senior tour. I'll play 32 tournaments this year. I'm gone about 35 weeks a year. My golf show, my clinic, was influenced by Paul Hahn Sr. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Paul Hahn Sr. I used to watch him do his trick shot show. I always thought it was funny, entertaining, and I just enjoyed it. And he influenced me eventually in doing something like this. But my teaching has been influenced by Ernest Jones, Swing the Club Head, and Manuel Della Torre in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who teaches Swing the Club Head. There's a book. In the latest Golf Digest magazine, they have something you can order this through Golf Digest. Swing the Club Head by Ernest Jones. Everything I talk about here today is based on swinging the club head. Feel. I don't care what the body does. I think the body is an admirable follower of the golf swing, but a disastrous leader. I think it follows the motion, doesn't create it. My show also is an accuracy trick shot show. I'm going to aim for the fifth flag out there, that second last one. Accuracy trick shots. <laughs> that's good. And that's what you're trying to do. You're aiming at the flag, you hit that shot. A lot of you today. How many of you here play uh, just two or three times a year? A couple, how many play uh, once a week? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hemingway said there's only three sports, mountain climbing, bullfighting, and car racing. All the other sports are games. <laughs> but what are some of these great secrets? Like, like I know all the stuff you people are thinking about when you're playing, like the left arm. That last shot that I hooked, if I got that left arm rigid, tight, and tense. Now, is that going to help that shot? Now I got some good tension in it. Step. The ball went a little bit to the right. Now I get both arms nice and tense and tight. Will that help straighten out the shot? That's a little better. Maybe if I put this toe up, got these two arms out, I could get a ball on the green. Look at that. The minute I got that toe off the ground. <laughs> so what, what is important? You ever think about left arm, rigid, tight, and tense, right elbow in close. You notice now you can't hold on to the club anymore? <laughs> See, those are two things that, that I wouldn't worry about. I wouldn't think about. They're not important. They're the result of moving the club properly. You know, the stance in golf, open, closed, square. You know, they talk so much about the stance, you think you hit the golf ball with your stance. You take, if you open your stance, that's when you draw your left foot back from your line of flight, they say you should slice it, should go this way. See, if you open it enough, like slightly open, you can never hook the ball from this stance. <laughs> and if you close the stance, now that's going to hook it, not slice it. Never slice it from this stance. Get your feet too close together, lose your balance. You can't play that way. You can't get any accuracy with your feet together. That wasn't a good shot. We'll put them together and get that left arm a little stiffer. <laughs> Goes to the right. Too wide a stance, you lose your balance. See, it should be what? The width of your shoulders. 
think about that. What does that mean? How are they measuring? From here to here? From here to here? <laughs> See, if you get it too wide, what does it do? Restricts your backswing. What happens then? You lose distance. Look at the distance I lose with too wide a stance. <laughs> See the distance? See where I was hitting those other shots? That one went over the green. <laughs> too wide a stance. So, what's important? Do you want some swing tips for pointing today? Now I do. <laughs> How can you have an original copy of something? You think about that. Why does sour cream have an expiration date on it? Another good swing thought. <laughs> <laughs> when you ship something by boat, they call it a cargo. And when you deliver something by car, they call it a shipment. What <laughs> else you can think about? <laughs> You're over in Hawaii. Good swing tip. How? Why do they have interstate highways in Hawaii? <laughs> no wonder the government's in trouble. <laughs> why would you chop a tree down and then chop it up? <laughs> Another swing thought. The best one I had when I finished second in Boston, the only thing I thought about all week was whatever happened to absorbing senior? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're laughing at my swing thoughts, but who's got the best swing thoughts? Here's your swing thoughts. You're out there today, and you're saying, don't break the wrist until the waist tight, turn the shoulders 90 degrees, hips 45 degrees, keep the left arm straight, right elbow in close, shift the weight, keep the head still, and relax. <laughs> The mind brain scientists tell us we can think of one thing at a time. Did you know that? One thing. You can jump back and forth, but your mind can concentrate on one thought at a time. How can you think of ten things? You know, they have a new book out, just came out, the 18 things you must remember at impact. No wonder the game's hard. You thought there were more? You see, simplicity comes, as I said before the clinic, not with the addition of thoughts, but with the subtraction. You have to reduce the game to this simple one thought. And the one thought should be on swinging the golf club. What's a swing? A swing has the same laws as a pendulum. It speeds up half the way, slows down, stops, and changes directions. That's a swinging motion. With the golf ball, with the eye hooks, you can learn how to do this. Just because it looks easy doesn't mean it is. Some of you will take that golf ball and not put a piece of string on it and not even try it. And you know why? I tried to get people to do this on their own. That's why I passed out the eye hooks and the golf balls. <laughs> because they watch me and they say there's more to it than that. And I'm here today to tell you the game is a joke. <laughs> what you're trying to do when you play, it's a joke. All that body stuff, body positions. There's no position in motion. It's continuous. And this golf club swinging like this, it speeds up half the way, slows down and stops and changes directions. And I can do that without thinking about it. I'm talking to you. But if I tried to speed it up, slow down, stop, change, the motion's gone. There's no position in motion. It's continuous. The golf swing has to be simplified. There's more to it than the body positions. I'm not saying the left arm isn't extended and the right elbow isn't in close and you don't shift your weight. But when you consciously try to shift your weight, that's when it becomes a problem. Walking is not a problem. I can put an 8-inch plank down on the ground, and you can all walk on it. 
because you walk and you create the balance. And if I raise it up 30 feet, nobody wants to walk it. Why? They try to get balance first. Balance is the result of walking. Why does a kid trying to ride a bike for the first time fall? He tries to balance first and he doesn't pedal. The pedaling creates the balance. If you want to put a top in balance, what do you do with it? You spin it. And if you want to put a golfer in balance, you have him swing. You see the three basic fundamentals to any sport, football, golf, hockey, anything, there are only three fundamentals in all the sports, in my opinion. Control, balance, and timing. And if you have control, you have the other two. They're a result of having control. And in golf, you have to have control of the club. And that's why I want you to learn how to do this. The game's elusive. It's elusive because it's a swinging motion. It's a feel. You have to learn how to do this. You can do this with your legs crossed. Do it with your back to the target. You can do it looking at the crowd. You get the feel of doing this. You also get the feel of the swinging motion by putting a, getting a bungee cord. One golf ball in a head cover. The graphite head covers are longer, it seems to work better. Wrap it around, and you got a little swingy motion again. Get a little wiffle ball, bungee cord, and a grip. You can make that thing over there for about 50 cents. You can write me in Milwaukee and get this apparatus for $300. <laughs> 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 now think about this. They don't, they don't talk about the golf swing as being a circle. I think it's a circle. They say it's a squash, it's oblong, it's cake shape. But the golf swing is a circle. Every time they've taken a picture of it with a strobe camera with a light on the end, they can take the motion. The body is blurred and they get the motion of the club head. And they say it's squash, it's not circular. That's because of the angle of the, the photographer is on ground level. He's on ground level with me. And if we had a strobe camera, it would look a little. But if the cameraman was on the same plane as the swing, the swing has this plane, so he'd have to be up there. On a perpendicular plane, you wouldn't get the distortion and you'd see the circle. But you see the circle? With this white ball, that's centrifugal force making this, the cord is only this long, it's reaching way out. That's centrifugal force working. How many times have you read in a book where you take the club straight back and straight through? You probably tried it, you probably read it. And what's hard about doing something like that is that it's impossible because there's no straight lines in a circle. They're curved lines. You're dealing with curved lines and centrifugal force. So, what else is important? You know, they've had great players with open, closed, narrow, and wide stance. But never in golf, you can check the record book, has a great player won a big tournament with his legs crossed. Oh, you can check the record books. <laughs> and, and there's a reason. The game is, they've made it so complicated. See, when you cross your legs, your right foot's drawn back from your line of flight. They don't know if that's open or closed. <laughs> but you could play that way. <laughs> you know, what what is what is important? Control, balance, and timing. How about a square stance, play the ball where? Where do you all play it? Off your left heel? Good place? Something to build 
foundation going at that green out there. Now, this is square stance <laughs> off the left heel. <laughs> no, that's about off. Is that about off the left heel? <laughs> See, when you get sound basic fundamentals down, you know, don't worry about swinging the club at the target. That's not important at all. It's where your how your body's lined up. See? You got it played off your left heel, you're set. <laughs> you know, don't worry about swinging the club at the target. That's not important. You know, worry about the legs driving through and creating the speed. Watch how the legs drive through and create all that speed. <laughs> How the legs drive through there, create that speed. <coughs> think about what you think about what you're trying to do. Look, I got the club up here now. I drive with the hips. Mm. See that club move? <laughs> All right, legs move. See it move? That doesn't move the golf club. I'm not saying they don't move, but that isn't the speed producer. <coughs> The arms on the forward swing are the speed producers. Now, what are the arm? Words are so important. The arm isn't this. This is not this is the forearm, and this is the arm. The upper part of your arm here is the speed producer on the forward swing. And as Ernest Jones said, you swing the club head back with the hands. And we have changed it to swing the whole club at the target with the upper party arms. <coughs> That's all there is to go. This is the forearm, this is the arm. But it must be a swinging motion. Must be a swinging motion. <laughs> How about finishing with your weight what is it? 90% of the weight on the left foot, 10 on the right. Have you ever heard that? I know some of you are confused now that a book came out and said that it's 89 and 11. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if that was the secret, why wouldn't you start that way today? 90, 10. Does that look about right? 90, 10. better shot, 90-10, right at the pin. I think I had it 85-15. You know, I played that way for six months in Milwaukee when I was an amateur, and I get in the finals of the city tournament, guy beats me five and four, and you know what his secret was? 1090. <laughs> and I went home and I practiced, and it is 1090 one time in golf, and that's if you're left handed. <laughs> is it starting to make a little more sense? Yeah. <laughs> you know, to be successful in life, you have to, did you know you have to do everything twice to be successful? Everything has to be created twice. When you build a house, you have to make a blueprint first. So you mentally do the house with the blueprint. You take a trip, you mentally do it on the road map. The same in any sport. You have to mentally create a picture of what you're going to do in your mind. You mentally create the shot and then you go ahead and execute it. So with a buried lie, and that's why positive thinking is so important in anything. If you have to do everything twice and your thought is, I'm going to knock it in the water, you're creating the opposite effect you want. See, I see a high shot with, how many see a high shot? <laughs> Here, I'll help you. Take a T, got a T now under it. 
Now it's teed up. <laughs> you feel any better about it? See, I see a high shot. You mentally visualize the high shot at that green out there. And you create it in your mind. You go ahead and try and execute it. <laughs> so, what else is important? How about stopping at the top of the swing? Remember I said the golf swing does four things. It speeds up, half the way, slows down, stops, and changes directions. You know, Middlecoff won the U.S. Open, and he had a pause at the top of his swing. And they thought, well, maybe that's the secret. <laughs> if you're going to pause at the top of the swing, what I suggest is when you swing back, check the Velcro. <laughs> B's pointing towards your chin. about what I'm doing here. I got my back to the target like on that one shot. You know, when I swing normally, my point of my swing is here. But when I turn my back, it's a flatter point. And I don't really know what I do with my hips. I haven't figured that out yet. There's some kind of a weight transfer. And I don't know what. Have I got time to adjust and think of all those things? My mind has got to be on the target, like shooting darts. My mind's, on, my mind's on the target out there, and I know that if I swing this club at the target, the body will follow this motion. That's why I can hit this shot. So my mind's on the target, and you can get away with an awful lot in golf just swinging the club at the target with a swinging motion. Your body will adjust to that. Now, you're saying, well, he hooks everything. You know, I can fade it from there, too. <laughs> so, the backswing. I personally think it's better to get the swing <coughs> underway right away, and it'll probably continue. But you can actually, a lot of good golfers that swing back, Jim Elvis from the Senior Tour swings back real slow. Nancy Lopez, I think, got that real deliberate Bob Murphy. Ever try to swing club that back that slow? I can't do it. That's not a swinging motion. They're carrying the club to a position. But the forward swing, all the great players swing on the forward swing. Because you could play golf this way. You could just eliminate the backswing, go up, <laughs> and swing through like that. Well, that was a bad shot. Remember, we're going at the target. Get that toe off the ground again, and that'll straighten everything out. <laughs> It's just you have to have the right fundamentals. You know, think about the two words, style and form. Style is a peculiar way an individual develops the proper form. When you go out to a tournament, you watch the style. You're copying the style of the players. That's not what's important. Form. And everything has a shape and a form. And the shape of a golf swing is part of an arc. And part of an arc is part of a circle. That's the form. They have the correct form. You go out and you copy. Think about it. This week, at the Vantage, if I would win that tournament and have this toe off the ground, say I won the tournament playing this way, except on the greens, because you wouldn't want to put a heel mark. And I play, I can play pretty good this. I play about the same. <laughs> now, if I won that tournament in Greensboro or Winston, you'd go out to the driving range the following week and everybody would be hitting balls with their right toe off the ground. 
Then the next year I'd come back and have this tore off the ground. <laughs> then the following year they be ball crack that's the I hit that shot despite that toe being off the ground not because of it that's the style you're not watch that's why kids juniors can watch a good player and imitate the action why they see it as a whole they can imitate the club pro if he's a good player, the kids, or another player, or their dad, or their mother. But the adults, they can analyze every part of that swing. And golf being an art, golf's a pure art form. It's not a science. And how would an artist draw a circle? One continuous motion. How would the scientist draw it? or the 18 handicapper. One degree at a time, 360 degrees, paralysis by analysis. <laughs> Can't think of all those things. You know, you can also play golf with both heels off the ground. It's a joke. The game's a joke. <laughs> What, how about reverse weight shift? Probably some of you hit some bad shots and you fall back on your right foot. I'm not advocating that you play that way, but if you swing the club, you can play that way. Doesn't matter. Look, that that is my best shot. <laughs> that is the way to play. <laughs> I've been looking for it. <laughs> See, I hit that shot good despite the reverse weight shift. It's a swinging motion. It's a feel. That's why the game's elusive. You can't talk about or you can't write down what it feel. The problem in golf and in teaching is when a good player like myself starts to write down what you're supposed to do. Most golf books are on the way this individual plays, not on what's correct. You know, Gabe Brewer has a loop at the top of his swing. Well, if you if you want to beat some, if you're playing somebody a match, and you tell them you know you're playing real good today, your loop is a little bigger than it usually is. <laughs> <laughs> and he says that's back. <laughs> you see, if you loop the club, it's always clockwise. If you can remember that, and that's that's what's important. If you swing back and you're going to loop it. Clockwise. <laughs> That's what's important. That is a good thing. Maybe there is a loop. <laughs> now you talk, now you say, you know, there's 18 causes for slicing the ball. I use this when I when I when I used to teach. 18, one of them would be too thick a grip would tend to cause to slice the ball. Too thin a grip tends to hook the ball. Taking it straight back tends to slice it. Too far inside hooks it. But there's 18 causes for slicing. The two biggest causes for slicing, and most of you slice, is your left arm is too tense and tight. And too tense and trying to keep your head still. <laughs> You underline the two biggest causes, and most of you are trying to do that. See, the head moves in golf. I've never given a clinic. I've asked this question in all my clinics. Has there anybody ever, think about this, raise your hand, when you go to kill a fly and he's up against the wall or the window, 
you go up there with that fly swatter, and just as you're taking that fly swatter back to kill that fly, is there anybody here that said, I'm going to get them if I keep my head still? <laughs> anybody? <laughs> anybody think about you're, what are you doing? You're swinging the fly swatter, and you're at the fly. You're watching the fly. You don't care about your head. The same thing in golf. It's important to watch the fly when you kill it with the fly swatter, but it's not important to keep your head still. And it's important to watch the golf ball when you swing the club, but it's not important to keep your head still. You're going to end up with back trouble, <laughs> keeping your head still. Look, how does this look? Does this look, I'll keep, I'm going to try and keep my head as still as possible. <laughs> now, first of all, I don't know where the ball went. You need a caddy. <laughs> the head moves. Now, I'm not saying it moves this much, <coughs> but if I'm playing with a good player and we have a big gallery, I can pick out who moves. See, I can swing back, whoop, and he moved right there. <laughs> I don't have to yell at the whole group. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can move that head. Here, I hit a good shot moment. <clears throat> These things are all the result of moving this golf club. Another way to learn the field, turn the club around. Swing it, the grip in. This would be good before you start today. Ten times. Turn the club around, and for the first time, you'll feel the head. See, the first shot, you'll hit, and you'll feel the head. That's George Page. This is one of Tommy Bolt's old clubs I had repaired. <laughs> But you notice if you swing the club, <laughs> you remember Tommy Bolt? You know how we test the wind on the senior tour now? <laughs> Tommy Bolt. Remember I said I was influenced by Paul Hahn Sr.? Tommy Bolt came down the 72nd hole in the tournament, said to his caddy, he had a nice drive. Last hole in the tournament, he said, what club do you think it is into the green? The caddy said it's either an eight iron or a four wood. And Tom said, why is that? Caddy said, that's the only clubs we got left. <laughs> Tommy Ball, put the club back a little slower. What a great swing. <laughs> You know, some of you are here today, did you all bring golf clubs or you rent a set? Anybody rent a set? But you ever go to an Audi and you didn't bring your clubs? You go into the shop to rent a set of clubs, you're right-handed, they got one set left. What do they got left? Left. Left-handed. Right. No big deal. <laughs> no. Just tee the ball up a little higher, turn the club around. Remember some of the fundamentals we talked about. Don't swing the whole club at the target with your upper part of your arms. That's not important. Get yourself in balance. Just as much weight on the toes as the heels. See the ball up, still going at the same target, and you're set to play some decent golf. Sand trap just to the right of that green we were shooting at. Nice 
great shot right here. But if you have left-handed irons, you have left-handed woods. <laughs> Move. Take the club. Get a little longer tee now. That's all you need. Tee it up. Turn it around. Just wait. Wow. <laughs> how, many, how, how many people did you kill learn how to do that? <laughs> it's just in coordination and balance and timing. <laughs> Want to hit the ball a little farther? Hit a little longer club. You know, I want to tell you, anybody that tells you they play as good a golf at 25, at 55, as they did at 25, didn't play very good at 25. <laughs> you know, when you get old, you lose a little distance, see? So I got a 46-inch club, weighs 11 ounces, swing weight D7. Slight hook. <laughs> now what am I think about that? I was aiming over that. I'll aim at that other green, but I hooked that shot. Now think, this is important. I hit a bad. I hooked that shot. What am I going to do on the next shot? Cut it. <laughs> Why wouldn't I do the same thing I tried to do on 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 the bad shot? If what I was doing was right. There's nothing right. There's nothing wrong about what's right. Why would I change? There's nothing right about what's wrong. I'm going to try and do the same thing I did on that shot that I hooked. I'm going to try and swing the whole club at the target with the upper part of my arms. There are some people that come out to the tournaments that watch us don't go that far on vacation. That's <laughs> true. I just got a couple more shots here. But think about it. Look. Is this going to affect this shot? I can still play this way. <laughs> Got rid of your draw. Yeah, I don't feel any fear of the left side. You have to keep it simple. Just because this looks easy doesn't mean it is. Take that golf ball, take that eye hook, and make this. Learn how to do this. I've given you four ways of the 20 how to get the feel of swinging a golf club. This is all there is to golf. Not this other stuff. Loose impediments. Ooh, I forgot something. If you're wondering what they use these boxes for when you buy it, you know, everybody's thrown. You should use them on par threes. Tee your ball up inside the box. That's what they're designed for. <laughs> Point it at the target and just let it go. <laughs> Is it starting to make a little more sense? <laughs> and of course, paper cup. Put the ball in there.
don't think about what you can use the putter for. You want to drive with it? Go ahead and drive with it. Okay. Get a little iron shot to the green. Do it. Watch this shot. Over here to the screen. Watch that shot. <laughs> watch it, watch it. See it biting? <laughs> <laughs> and the square group. <laughs> Talked two and a half years and spent three million dollars on that square group. <laughs> My last shot, I thought Paul Hahn had the greatest shot in golf. And that was he laid somebody down on the ground. Okay. He had him facing this way, put a tee in their mouth and put a golf. And he actually did this shot. The greatest trick shot in golf. Then he said, lay down, close your eyes, I'm going to take a practice swing. <laughs> but this is not a hard shot. I'll hit this shot. The tee will still probably be in it. I'll go at that green over there on the left, the far one. Just line it up, let it go. Is there anybody, anybody here would like to volunteer? <laughs> you can take your glasses off. Is there a practice swing? <laughs> anybody just like to hold the tea in their, in their hand? I have insurance. I have $1,500 insurance. <laughs> no, really. want to thank Altel for inviting me again. Gonna have some fun out today. W weather looks like it's just gonna stay about like this. I'll see you on 17. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for supporting the senior tour. Last shot. Bob, Bob before you close, uh, we're gonna have a picture taken over there with you. Okay. On the first tee of the south course. Pictures on the first tee of the yeah. south course. Yeah. One other announcement. We're gonna be about 10 minutes uh, behind schedule because there's a group that did the turn. They waited for the rain, so we got about an extra 10 minutes. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, last shot. Thanks for coming out. If there's some questions or, you know, just ask me. I'll be out on 17 also after the pictures, right? Yeah, right. that's correct. Are we teeing off just one tee? First tee? No, no, one, one and ten. So we'll one go back ten. and forth? Yeah. Are you sure you wouldn't like to? <laughs> huh? No. <laughs> Right at that, it's not that big a deal, really.